Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is Delay Designer, and in today's video, we are going to look at everything new with Planet Zoo Twilight Pack. If you're looking for an overview video of everything new in free update 1.11, I have uploaded a different video on the channel as well, which will show you everything new in the free update. But this video will only cover everything new in the new Planet Zoo Twilight Pack. And if you're interested in getting the Twilight Pack yourself, our channel is sponsored by Instant Gaming and via their website, you can get the Twilight Pack and all other Planet Zoo packs with a really nice discount. Obviously, their website also offers a lot more other games with a discount, so definitely make sure to check them out if you haven't already, because by buying via the website you will get a great discount and you will also be supporting the channel i will make sure to put a link to their website in the description of this video and in the pinned message of the comment section so you can easily find it now one more quick note before we jump into it i just came back from a nice vacation to curacao so unfortunately i only had a few hours to prepare this overview video for you guys so i might be missing out on some things or i'm not able to really go that much in depth with all topics but i will do my best as always Ways to share as much information as I can with you guys. But yeah, today's video may not be that well edited due to some time issues, but I do hope you guys can forgive me for that. And if you're interested in seeing more pictures and videos of my lovely holiday and the amazing sea turtle experience that I had in Curacao, then make sure to follow me on Instagram with the link in the description. So now, without further talking, let's go over all the things coming to you with the Twilight Pack. So the first thing we are going to cover are these new roof pieces. I obviously did not put down all the pieces because, well, we know by now what kind of set you will get if there is a new roof set. So, but right over here, there are some few other pieces as well to use for your roofs. And you have this particular shape for your roofs. This one is a non-grid roof piece. And of course, you will get these roof pieces as well because they fit very well with the tower pieces I will show later on. And right over here, there are some window trims, some really nice windows right over here as well, which are recolorable. And uh, yeah, I really do like this stone. Like a lot of people were very worried with this Twilight Pack being like super duper Halloween-ish styled. But clearly Frontier gave us like a lot of pieces that can be used for a lot of different views and themes. And it really doesn't have to be per se Halloween. Like, okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> talking about Halloween. Like, this is very much Halloween. Also pieces that are probably not won't be using myself too often uh, maybe not at all if I won't be making any Halloween <laughs> park myself uh, but yeah I, I don't really mind these type of pieces being in here as well these are bins by the way and uh, this is of course a really beautiful canopy but as I said like I, I don't really think that I will be using it that much but there are like really a lot of beautiful pieces that can be used for a lot of different ways there are like stone pieces right over here which are very very nice and also recolorable if i'm correct yes they are so they are definitely super versatile to use in many different zoos these are some metal pieces these are also very recolorable so also super useful and then you have some gates maybe a little bit too much halloweenish uh, but I do think that this can be a very general fence and gate as well. Not entirely sure about these, but they are also recolorable. And I think you can use these for maybe a city zoo or something like that. I think that might match. Maybe even for a fence. Not entirely sure if that would definitely fit. Uh, then we have this wall set right over here. This one is also recolorable. So that is super nice. Again, I did not put down all the wall pieces, but you guys know what kind of other wall pieces you will get as well if you get a new wall set. So obviously all the pieces are there. I just did not put them down all of them because it's just like, yeah, you, we guys know how it works. Then right over here, there are some extra roof pieces. Again, these are all recolorable. There are some tower pieces and stuff. So yeah, if you want to build like castles and those kind of things, you can definitely eat your heart out with these beautiful pieces. But I can totally also see people using this, for example, as a 
cover for like a table or something like that. I think these are definitely pieces that can be used for a lot of different ways as well. The only thing that I would say is that these pieces may feel a little bit too big for other other purposes than uh, than these towers. But I don't know. I think uh, us creative people can definitely find some ways to use these pieces as well for other reasons. Uh, but yeah, there are definitely some really nice pieces here and make it's going to make building towers a lot easier for sure. And, and I can definitely uh, see people also just cover up the stone with like a different texture and then uh, be able to use these tower pieces for, for a little bit of a different way and a, and a different vibe. Clearly, these mushrooms um, are maybe a little bit too Halloween-ish as well, but I don't know. It, it could definitely also fit like just a fantasy theme or something like that. But I, I don't know. I, I could see people use this for different ways, maybe make some own exhibits and stuff and, and like not use it per se as some mushrooms. I think there are definitely more more purposes for these uh, mushroom pieces in a different way than fantasy or Halloween. So let's quickly go over here. We have some more beams. As far as I can tell, these are not climbable, which makes them a lot more easier to use for like the edges of your habitats also with climbing animals so that is definitely very useful to know these are also colorable recolorable so definitely uh, able to use for different ways i really do like this dispense piece i don't know it looks just so beautiful and these are door pieces they call it but clearly just some wooden panels in my opinion where you can use uh which you can use for a lot of different ways as well and right over here, there are some uh, emissive decal panels. Not entirely sure where I would use these for. It could be like these these window frames with like these uh, these edges, but not entirely sure what to do with these pieces just yet. They are recolorable. Not really sure how they look. Like it maybe they they um oh, they might just light up in the dark. Yes, there we go. Right. Okay, so you have like, you, oh, you can make your own windows with that. That is really cool, actually. That can be very useful for some people, depending on what you're going to build, that is. And then we have some really nice statues right over here. Again, a little bit too themed, maybe for some people. Uh, I saw even a saying on Twitter already that some of these statues may also be used for a tropical theme, not per se for a Halloween theme. And this little raccoon can obviously be used for whatever you like. But yeah, I can see why people feel like maybe these statues are a little bit too overly themed uh, for some specific themes. And then we have these pieces right over here. We have a bunch of nice signs. They are in the same style as the previous packs as far as I can tell. Maybe a little bit sharper, but I, I do really like it that it's, it's pretty much in the same style. Then we have a, a light torch here as well. And then right over here, you also have some uh, kind of, I, I don't know how you call that, pa paper mache. I'm not really, papier mache we say in the Netherlands, but I actually do not know how to pronounce that in English. Although it, it says it is, but for me, it could be just normal statues. I don't really... Uh, think that it matters too much they are in a in a very different style so you you like it or not i guess and then right over here there are some uh really nice white signs you can obviously recolor these and i do really feel like these and especially these guys can be super useful if you want to make like your own wall signs so these are like tree parts and then you have like a moon and and obviously we have like a, a huge variety already of some white signs in the game so especially like these mountains for in the backside i think are going to be super useful these can also be used for like nocturnal houses and stuff so i think think these are definitely a little bit more useful than also only for Halloween. Well, obviously, these uh, jack-o'-lanterns, uh, we don't have to say anything else about that. They are pretty much Halloweenish. But if you rotate them, 
they are just some simple pumpkins. So you can use these for different ways as well. And then we move right over here. This is the nature section. So some really nice roots right over here and some vines. And uh, these guys are not climbable as far as I can tell. They are they actually recolorable? I do not know. No, they're not recolorable. I don't think they are climbable, which makes them useful to uh, use on the edges of your habitats as well. And uh, yeah, I I think like many would say probably that it's too much Halloweenish, but I think I am going to use these guys a lot. I think they are going to look very awesome if we just sink them into the ground a little bit and create these 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 roots and vines around the habitat really for some decorational purposes i think they are going to look fantastic honestly and then we have some leaf patches right over here which are not recolorable which is actually a little bit sad but these uh, leaf patches are really only in autumn color and then we have these ghost fungus then you have these lord and ladies plants you have a one single one and the same with these guys the lord and ladies plants uh, one single one and one bigger one right over here we have some beautiful flowers here some common foxglove in white in pink and another one in pink and there is one right over here in yellow and i don't think these are recolorable which would have been really nice to be honest but unfortunately they are not but these rocks are recolorable and they are definitely going to be super useful for decorating a lot. These can be turned upside down, of course, as well. And I think these are definitely really useful for a lot of different ways for like nocturnal houses and also for like building your own exhibits, maybe, or maybe just like a cave or anything like that. I think these pieces are definitely going to be very very useful at least if I talk about myself <laughs> in my opinion and then right over here we have the common jew tree and in two different sizes as well definitely also a very beautiful tree really do like the branches and the color and it's not like too big uh, yeah, I do really like this tree set as well. And right over here is just a few examples of some blueprints that Frontier added of how you can use these pieces in a very, very Halloween-ish way. And right over here, you can see that little uh, pa paper mache uh, statue as well. And uh, I think I think they look really cool. I really do like it that Frontier added this. Oh, they, also the pumpkins are recolorable as well. And right over here, this sign also looks fantastic. Really love it how this one is set up. Now we have this humongous tower right over here. Just to show you guys a little bit what you can do with these pieces, like these roof pieces. You can really create holes and stuff. Something I was really missing in Planet Coaster, to be honest. Now that I see this, I'm like, oh yes, I definitely missed out on that. Uh, but oh, man, this absolutely looks fantastic. These are the metal pieces that are used to create this. I mean, yeah, this, this is really awesome. I really did want to show this to you guys because it looks really cool. Also, this windmill, it's fantastic. It really is. Props to anyone that made this and added this into the game. So yeah, if you have the Twilight Pack, you can obviously just plop down all these blueprints right over here and use them for your uh, Halloween-style uh, zoo. But yeah, as I said, there are many pieces in here that can be used for a lot of different ways and not only for Halloween. So I think definitely a lot of people will be very happy with all these pieces even though they might not really be into like the halloween style itself i am really really happy with all these pieces that we are having here so far even though some should have been recolorable in my opinion i am definitely very happy with this uh with these pieces so the first animal we are going to look at is this beautiful adult raccoon i know that some people really do not like raccoons and some people absolutely love raccoons and uh, I am one of those people that uh, <laughs> cannot stand the cuteness of these raccoons but we do not have that many raccoons living in the wild here in the Netherlands so I guess it really depends if they are like a plague as like rats 
or that they are just some cute animals that you mostly see in a zoo, I guess. But I really do think that Frontier did a fantastic job with these really cute raccoons. I really hope that we can see some babies very soon in this habitat. But yeah, I am really excited to see these animals being added in the Twilight Pack as well. They look absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I love it when they do that. Oh, <laughs> that's really cute. Oh, I really like these animations. I'm not really sure if they are supposed to do this in this shallow water. I guess so. Maybe more on the edge. Oh, but I really like it that Frontier added this animation to the raccoons because that is something that I saw them do in real life as well. With like tapping their little hands on the ground. Oh man, it's so adorable. Yeah, I really do like it that they're <laughs> added into the game. And oh my goodness, look how tiny they are. Oh my goodness. They are so adorable, these little kits of the raccoons. Oh, they're really tiny. Look at the difference with the adult. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, I love it that they added this tiny kits of the raccoons in the game. They look absolutely adorable. Look at that little face. Oh. <laughs> They look so freaking adorable. Really, really love these guys. So now let's quickly go over the Zoopedia right over here. They are of least concern, which doesn't really surprise me. And right over here, you can see they mostly live in North America and Central America. One adult needs 210 square meters of land and 20 climbing frame square meters, and then a water requirement of 10 square meters. And their temperatures are minus nine until 42. So that's pretty diverse actually. And then we go to species data. You can have two to five, so two males up to three females in one habitat in one playing franchise mode or, or with management settings on, of course that is. Guests can enter their habitat. They become around 14 years old. They become mature at two years old. They have an offspring of two to four, and they're very easy to reproduce in captivity. And research status, you can see right over here, all the enrichment items that can be unlocked with research, but there's not anything new or special with these animals or this pack. So only the ball pumpkin is new but that's just a different skin of these balls i guess interspecies enrichment bonus is with the north american beaver and the striped skunk which we're going to look at right now oh my goodness i really had no idea that a skunk would be this tiny this is just an adult guy am i is this really an adult i started to doubt myself this is an adult look how freaking tiny this one looks it looks so freaking adorable. I actually really love these guys. Look at the fur, by the way. I think Frontier did such a fantastic job on these guys. Oh man, I cannot wait to see the little ones from the skunk here. I mean, they should be really, really adorable then as well. I'm really pleasantly surprised with these guys. They look fantastic and so freaking adorable. Tell me in the comments down below if you guys agree with me. But yeah, I am really excited about these guys, actually. Oh, man, I can't get over how good they are looking. And then right over here, we have two little baby skunks, a.k.a. kids. Oh, my goodness. Look at this little face. <laughs> they are so tiny and so adorable. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea, but I actually absolutely love these guys like i've never seen them before in real life so i i just didn't have any association with skunks other than from tv but they are so freaking adorable i absolutely love these guys oh my goodness they're so adorable so tiny and so cute i really can't wait to build a habitat for them oh my that is gonna be so much fun look at that little face <laughs> <laughs> really absolutely adorable do let me know in the comments down below what you guys uh, feel about this little baby kids 
Oh, so, so cute. <laughs> So let's quickly go over the Striped Skunk Zoopedia. This one is also from least concern. Their natural habitat is mostly in North America. One adult need 180 square meters of land and they can have a temperature of minus 7 until 38 degrees. And right over here we have the species data, one up to two, so one male and one female in one habitat. Guests cannot enter their habitat. They become adults at eight years old. They become mature at one year old and they can have an offspring of one to five. And they are very easy to reproduce in captivity. Right over here we have some fun facts and of course everything that they can use for enrichment items and can be researched right over here. And they have an interspecies enrichment bonus with the black-tailed prairie dog, North American beaver and the raccoon. So right over here, we have a pregnant and offspring imminent common wombat. And uh, they also have a pouch right over here. So the joey should be coming out of there, just like we've seen with the koalas, I am assuming. And uh, these guys also are an animal that I have never seen in real life. But they look so adorable. I know that like a lot of people were super excited of getting a common wombat into the game. They have been asking for common wombats ever since the start of Planet Zoo, I'm guessing. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually really excited to see these animals myself. Like I, uh, as I said, like I've never really been, um, I've never really seen these animals before. So for me, it's just like, oh, right. Okay, we're getting common wombats. That's fun. But I really, really love this animal, it looks so adorable. And I actually read that <laughs> these guys, when they poop, <laughs> they have like square poo particles. So um, I don't know if we are able to see that in the game. I'm assuming that Frontier, like they, they, they do focus on the realistic poop side of the game, if that is how we should call it. So I am assuming there will be a square poop <laughs> to the game as well with the common wombat. But it's like apparently to stop the poop from rolling off their marked territory of rocks or trees. So that is why they have that. But don't ask, okay? I I'm just telling what I read. But they are actually really interesting animals. And uh, man, can you please just uh, give birth? Wait, is that like a baby already? It is, but I actually would love to see the animations of the little Joey coming out of their belly. This one is still imminent, so I guess as soon as this one is, is done sleeping, we should be seeing, like, we cannot see <laughs> anything from here. Can we see it? Like, with the koalas, you can actually see through, but I guess not. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to give up on the waiting, but this is a little baby Joey from the Common Wombat, and <laughs> it's so adorable, isn't it? And again, so tiny. I really love these guys as well. The animals in this pack are so freaking good so far. I am really excited to build habitats for these guys. Also, because they're like a lot smaller and stuff. Absolutely love them. Look at that little cute face. They are really adorable. Do let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about the uh, common wombats. So now let's quickly go over the Zoopedia as well. They are of least concern. Their natural habitat is mostly in Oceania. One common wombat needs 225 square meters of land. Their temperature requirements is minus 4 until 38 degrees. Right over here, the species data, you can have one male and one female in one habitat. Guests cannot enter their habitat. They can get up to 21 years old. They become an adult at two years old and they have an offspring of one. And then a research status, you can have some fun facts right over here. And then the enrichment items that can be researched for this animal here as well. And they do not have an interspecies enrichment bonus. And then right over here, we have the Egyptian fruit bat. I, I have this one on pause just to show you guys how amazing the fruit bat looks, first of all, because they look 
absolutely fantastic. Like again, like all the animals in this pack look incredible. But this is obviously a special one because this one is part of the bigger exhibit that is now being integrated in the game. And uh, they have some type of loops, I'm guessing. So it's not like free flying or anything like that. Uh, but uh, clearly it does look a lot better than the exhibit animals that we have so far because they basically do not even move from their spot unless you look at the, the terrapin and, uh, or something like that. But they are clearly in a loop. So it's definitely not something that I hope will be used for uh, flying animals in the future as well. Like, I, 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 I don't really mind it too much for these bats. But yeah, it definitely is not something that I hope to see in the future for actual birds. What I do really like, for example, is the idea that these exhibits will also be used for example for like butterflies like i don't really mind seeing butterflies being in a loop just like this and because the cool thing with these bigger exhibits is that you can like uh, decorate them so if we just go to layout you can obviously add all these type of things that you definitely also would see in you know, like a butterfly dome for example so there are like definitely a lot of different type of enrichment items to decorate this bigger exhibit with and i am assuming like once we move away from this exhibit just like with the uh, smaller exhibit types that if you go back that animals will move just like you see right now so now we see a lot of bats in a different type of loop and they will be, uh, I think, using... Yes, okay, so we have some bass right over here. Hanging down the rope. And there might be one stopping here for food at one point. Uh, I am. This is the first time I am looking at all these animations, guys. So for me, it's also still pretty new. Uh, but yeah, I can definitely see these type of uh, enrichment items being used for, for things like, like butterflies, maybe also some type of bugs. Uh, I don't really dare to say. Uh, but yeah, you can also, of course, oh, let's just uh, change the temperatures right over here. Uh, you can customize the walls so you can say like, oh, I only want to have no fences around here or you want to have glass fences or you want to have solid fences so you can make some, some type of uh, cave yourself out of this. You can uh, sink the wall and ceiling materials. You can change the floor to a solid one or a natural one. And then, of course, we have these, uh, these uh, curtains right over here. And these can also be removed. So yes, for example, if you would like have no fences all around it, you could even cover up the path so you can make it a little bit wobbly yourself maybe or something like that. And then you can make like this, this bigger cave with like one, two, th maybe three bigger exhibits and create like a, like a cave all the way by yourself i think that's something we're going to try and do for this uh this african mini zoo try and create some kind of bats cave with this but yeah i could totally see when when like having no fences and no doorways all around here and then having a few in a bigger building like a dome to have like a butterfly dome or something like that i really do hope that frontier is going to add that into the game i think that's going to be fantastic although i i do have to admit i can see that people might be disappointed with the bats um for me i think it's all right as long as they're not going to implement this for birds that is the only thing i really do want to have birds like we have flamingos but then also with the ability to fly i think that's not too much to ask seeing that we have deep diving animals i think flying animals would also definitely be a thing but i can see why for bats they choose to go for a bigger exhibit like this obviously i don't know what their plan is but this is what i hope and i hope that there will be some more things with these bigger exhibits like butterflies and stuff 
But do t- let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about these uh, bigger exhibits and what you hope they will be adding in the future as well regarding animals with these type of exhibits. So let's quickly go over the Zoopedia for the Egyptian fruit bat. It's of least concern. You can find the fruit bat in Africa and in Asia. They like a temperature of 21 to 32 degrees. You can have five up to 35 Egyptian fruit bats in one big exhibit. They become around 17 years old. They become mature at 15 months and they have a reproduction in captivity of average difficulty. And then a research status, as I just shared with you guys, these enrichment items that you can add into your exhibit. And obviously being an exhibit animal, there is no animal that they have an interspecies bonus with. And then last but not least, we have have the beautiful rat fox. I know a lot of people are very excited to see the rat fox being added into the game and I do have to say as well as all the other animals this one looks absolutely fantastic as well. Really beautiful well made the fur and stuff they look really fantastic. Now the only downside with the rat fox is that I do not have any cubs in here so far so uh yeah i'm afraid that this is a little bit bugged like i have been having a lot of other offspring in the other habitats but for some reason i tried to like replace the group here with some others but so far it's just not working out so i'm afraid that i just do not have any cups to show of this beautiful rat fox but clearly i am sure that the cubs look as adorable as the rest i will do my best like i do like this overview video of all the animals with all packs so i will uh, take some more time for that so hopefully in that video i will be able to show some cubs of the rat fox so uh, make sure to also watch that video and just uh, use the timestamp to go to the halloween pack if you are really excited to see these uh, rat fox cubs but yeah i'm just not able to show it in this video i'm afraid so let's quickly go over the zoopedia of the rat fox they are of least concern their natural habitat is mostly in north america europe africa and in asia one red fox needs 250 square meters of land. They can deal with minus 13 to 43 degrees Celsius. Species data, you can have up to 1 to 14, so 13 males up to 13 females in one group. Guests cannot enter their habitat. They can become up to 12 years old. They become adults at around 10 months old. They can have a number of offspring of 3 to 6. And they are very easy to reproduce in captivity, only not in this particular zoo as right now. We obviously have some fun facts right over here. And these are all the enrichment items that can be unlocked for the rat fox right over here. And they do not have an inter species enrichment bonus so yeah these were all the animals and all stuff you are getting with the planet zoo twilight pack which you can get with a really nice discount via instant gaming just make sure to click the link in the description of this video or in the pinned message of the comment section i think the animals look absolutely fantastic one by one no doubt about that and the pieces are also really great i think that i'm going to use a lot of these pieces even though i'm not really planning on making any Halloween park. So yeah, definitely very excited as well to be using all these new pieces. But of course, I would like to know what your thoughts are as well of the Twilight Pack. Do let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And of course, let me know what is your most favorite animal of this pack in the comments down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I really do hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye guys!